the Delphi St. John's marching band on the field as we get ready for high school football action today on WOSN. The Delphi St. John's Blue Jays playing host to the Lima Central Catholic Thunderbirds here high above Champions Field at Stadium Park. Good Afternoon, everyone. Patrick Hamler, Nate Garlock here with you. Lima Chevrolet Cadillac, the pregame and keys to the game sponsor for today's contest. The area's premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer in the greater Lima area. Serving Lima for over 100 years, we are proud to call this home. And as we get ready for what should be a really exciting matchup tonight, uh, Nate, what are we looking at for keys for each team to come away with a win? Yeah, it should be a great matchup this afternoon. The Holy War football edition out here at Champions Field at Stadium Park. Looking forward to this one. You know, when you take a look at both of these teams and you're looking at the keys to take today's game, they are they're rather similar. You know, if you're LCC, you know, you want to try to get Carson Parker out and, you know, the all-everything quarterback, find success with the legs through the air. He can get it all done. Last week uh, officially went over 6,000 yards of total offense, just a phenomenal player. You know, Delphi St. John's on the other side, they got a quarterback that knows how to use his legs, can air it out as well in all. So for both of these teams, the key is going to be able to contain that quarterback. If they can keep him from extending plays with his legs, picking up big grounds, that is going to be huge. You have to limit those explosive plays. Last week, LCC found a lot of success through the air as they were able to get behind the Shawnee Indians defense and had big play after big play, along with some very big runs that helped them uh, put a lot of points on the board. On the other side, Delphi St. John's, the exact same thing. A lot of points scored last week. They found a lot of success, and it was thanks to a lot of big plays. So both of these defenses have to be on point today. Those are your line of Chevrolet Cadillac keys to the game. The Holy War, the latest edition, the 2023 edition. Peace be with you and also with you. We're back for the kickoff after this on WOSN. Just about time for kickoff here at Champions Field. Delta St. John's and LCC getting a start. Both teams off to 1-0 starts. Very convincing victories last week. In the case of LCC, though, it's been not really a, a, a bye week, but it's all been pretty close to over a week since they've they've played football. And you kind of wonder, well, they went so long without playing football. Is there going to be any hint of rust that they might have to knock off here playing on a Saturday? Yeah, they got the extra rest playing on Thursday night last week to open things up against Shawnee. So there always is that little bit, hey, it's not the traditional schedule. It's always the beginning of the year, too, and, you know, schools are getting back into session. So we're transitioning from maybe an early morning practice to a right after school practice on top of all the heat issues that we have been having over the last week. You know, you're not quite sure how that might have affected practice as well. So I think that makes it even that much more important that the T-Birds get out here to a quick start. The furnace moved out of the area. It is a beautiful day for high school football, and we are underway. The T-Birds will receive the ball first as Milan Cowens getting away from a tackle. Thought they had him down around the 15-yard line, and he is still going out, pushed out of bounds at the 46-yard line. So that is where LCC will start this drive. Yeah, it looked like Cowan might have made a mistake that time as that one was almost over his head, able to gather that one in, and then was cut right up the middle of the field. Looked like he might be stopped for a short gain, but a strong move to get the defender off of him. And Cowan has some blazing speed when he gets in the open field, and you saw him put it to use right there. So that'll bring out the T-Bird offense for the first time. Of course, Carson Parker seems like he has been under quarterback forever for LCC, the senior one of the very few seniors on the team. This is a very young T-Bird team as they get started here at the 45-yard line. First and 10, that's Quatman going in motion, and Parker takes it straight up ahead past the 50 down to the 48-yard line. That's going to be something I think we're going to see a lot. Uh, you probably saw that quite a bit last week. Yeah, I mean, it's a, a much of the same uh, game plan for LCC. Carson Parker last week carried it 30 times in that victory against Shawnee. I mean, he does the heavy lifting. He does have help. Matthew Quatman back there, uh, tremendously fast and talented as well as you see him go into motion. They like to use that. And uh, this year they've really kind of moved more to that true RPO. I mean, it really is on Parker's shoulders. It's not a, you know, hey, we're going to make it look like that, but you have to do this. He gets to make those decisions out on the field, which I think will make him even that much more dynamic. Second down and four. Man in motion, and this is the handoff right up the middle to the aforementioned Quatman, and Quatman picking up close to a first down as he is wrapped up. A number of LCC guys 
in on the stop. I think number six was in on that as well. It could be number five, Colin Feathers. It's a good job by the defensive front there from St. John's. Just after that big first down pickup, knew another run was probably coming, was able to fill that gap quickly and limit Quatman to just a yard. You know, there's an element of LCC's offense that you look at. If you've watched them for years, and we both have, you think you kind of know what's coming, but still, teams have had a lot of difficulty stopping that offense over the years. Here we go, a third down and three. Two, rather. Parker going around outside, has enough for the first down before he is pushed out of bounds by a number of Blue Jays. That is going to be good for a first down. I think right there kind of shows what makes Parker different than a lot of other quarterbacks in this area. You just watched him able to break one tackle and then carry two more out of bounds and then still stood straight up where a lot of guys might end up on the turf or at a loss. He's very strong. He doesn't get off balance easily, and that's what makes him such a dynamic runner. Used all that 6'3", 210 pounds. One of four seniors on the team, and now Parker dropping back to pass. Pressure coming, rolls out, fires off right side. Cowens with the catch, and he's going to take it all the way in for a touchdown as LCC strikes first on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken scoreboard. Great play designed by the T-Birds that time. Carson was able to roll to his right. Throwing on the run just delivered as a strike to Cowan, who came all the way across the field. Looked like maybe a little bit of miscommunication in the middle of the field there by the Blue Jays as Cowan was able to get a couple of steps. So LCC wasting no time. They strike first. After a nice return by Cowens to set up the drive, Cowens with the touchdown grab. 6-0 here in the early going. And now the extra point coming up as Matthew Quatman, one of the kickers as the, I guess you'd say the starting kicker. Quatman's extra point is up. And it is good. 9.55 remaining in the first quarter. It's a 7-0 LCC lead. We'll be back when Delphi St. John's gets the football for the first time here on WOSN. Welcome back. Today's presenting sponsor is Union Bank. Union Bank committed to you. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's is our scoreboard sponsor. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens. LCC wasting no time getting down the field on a 65-yard drive. Punched in by Mylon Cowens with the nice touchdown grab to make it 7-0 LCC. And if you're head coach Scott Palti for the Lima Central Catholic T-Birds, that's just how you wanted this game to start. Absolutely. We talked about maybe whether or not we'd see a little bit of rust out of the Thunderbird team, but no rust whatsoever that time as they were able to march down very efficiently and get the score. Looked pretty sharp. And now the kickoff as Delphi St. John's will get the ball for the first time. As the 15 and plenty of space down the other side, Connor Gagne. Taking it into plus territory. He's pushed out of bounds at the 27-yard line. A flag coming out at the very end of the play over by the Delphi St. John's sidelines. As we'll see if that impacts the Blue Jays' starting field position. But a great return. Nice answer so far by the Blue Jays. Looks like there might be a sideline warning here as I think the Blue Jays might have gotten a little bit too far out. So that's what it does look like as the officials are over talking to Coach uh, Schulte, telling him his team was too far out. So just a warning, no, no harm, no foul that time for the Blue Jays. Just excited, <laughs> just eager to <laughs> get the football at the 26-yard line is Grant Ohm under center, new starting quarterback this season. And he looks to the sideline, responsible for three touchdowns and their win last week against Delphus Jefferson. And now he hands off the ball to TJ Wirtz. And Wirtz using all that 6'1", 220-pound frame to get across the 25 to the 24-yard line. You know, I think this is what's going to be interesting is this offense from St. John's looks an awful lot like the offense from LCC. It's that RPO. Ulm has options. He can make decisions as he sees them. And right out the gate that time, we see him let his uh, running back take that one up the middle for a uh, short gain. So a short gain, so that'll bring up second down and seven according to the scoreboard, man in motion, and the man in motion will get the football going for that far near side, rather, Braylon Metzger doing the job there before he is 
tackled by number 54 for LCC. That is Lewis Knotts getting the job done there. Now you see that kind of play with that sweep. A lot of times those handoffs can be bobbled. There, there can be some mistiming. That was about as perfect as you could have asked for as Words took advantage, able to get to that near side and pick up some big yardage. Here's Ulm. Third down and two. In the shotgun, here's the handoff going right up the middle is Colin Feathers. And Feathers threading the needle and doing more than that, pushing the pile ahead. It's going to be first and goal for the Blue Jays. And it took a lot of T-Birds to bring him down. Carson Parker among them on the tackle. Yeah, a great job that time by the offensive line of Delphi St. John's. They are able to pull open up a big hole. St. John's now down just inside the, or just outside the five-yard line. So first and goal coming up for DSJ. All run plays so far. Hasn't put it up in the air yet. See if that changes here at first and goal. And it's going to be Ohm on the option. He's going to keep it. He is going to keep it. And he's going to go in to the corner of the end zone for a touchdown. So Delta St. John's with a nice drive and a nice answer. Yeah, we may have a shootout here at Champions Field. LCC goes down and scores. St. John's with a great answer. All started by that tremendous kick return that gave them great field position, but not a lot of resistance from that Thunderbird defense. St. John's able to run all over them. One minute and 29 seconds on the drive. And now the extra point. Braylon Metzger in to attempt it. And a chance to tie this one up at seven. And that's exactly what happens. 8.26 remaining on the Lee's Recipe scoreboard. It is all tied up at seven between St. John's and LCC here on WOSN. Today's first down sponsor is Citizens National Bank. See how we're building business one relationship at a time at CMB Ohio. Com and Lottox Jewelry, the touchdown sponsor, your family-owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert or online at Lottox.com. And we've had two Lottox Jewelry touchdowns here in this one so far as the kick sails through the back of the end zone. And that is where LCC will start their next drive. And they're hoping that this drive... Second verse, same as the first, as they scored seven points in their last drive. Yeah, they're going to go a little bit farther this time as that uh, first kickoff was just short of going out of bounds as Cowens was able to get a hold of it that time. Delphi St. John's didn't want to let him have an opportunity to return it, made sure this one made it through the end zone. So Parker going to come back out and see if he can't replicate what they did on their last drive. So first down and 10, ball on the 20. For the Thunderbirds to start. And Parker, quick pass going around that far side. And the pass is complete as number two, Michael Quatman, the 5'9 freshman, making the catch there for five yards. And Michael Quatman, the freshman, did a nice job last week as well. Had a couple of design plays that came out to him as Coach Palti has a lot of trust in the freshman. His brother, Matthew Quatman, in the backfield. So a lot of talent out there on the field from the Quatman family. So second down and four up for LCC. And this is going to be a handoff right to Quatman. Looking for some space off tackle and gets just enough for the Citizens National Bank first down. Uh, went to the air to Michael Quatman. Decided to try the other side on the ground with Matthew Quatman. Results in a nice first down for LCC. Schrader was in there for the stop for the St. John's Blue Jays. So the last drive for LCC, pretty methodical, run play, run play, and then they had a pass play. They've started a little different. They started opening up with passing and are trying to mix it up a little bit more, at least it seems like here in the early going. Quatman in motion and gets the handoff on first down to the 32. He's going that left side, has plenty of space. Stiff arm, nice move as he is dragged down at the 41-yard line for another Citizens National Bank first down. 
And LCC might have gotten fortunate with that one. It looked like number 30, Caden Falk, had a handful of jersey from one of the St. John's players. Kind of saw him fall back. The officials didn't catch that, and it led to a big pickup for the Thunderbirds. No one at LCC saw that either, I would imagine. <laughs> Everyone at Delphi St. John saw exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> Dad moves the sticks. Now LCC on plus territory, about the 42-yard line. Parker all by himself in the backfield and is going to keep this one on first down and going absolutely nowhere as number 74, Jackson Hurston, getting in there, first contact and blowing that play up. Hurston did a tremendous job. He just did something that not a lot of people can do, and that is stand Carson Parker right up and hold him there. Last week, Parker only had one negative play with his legs, and right there, Hurston did a great job making sure that he didn't get past that line of scrimmage. Hurston, a 6'3", 290-pound sophomore, so he's going to grow a little bit, you all would imagine. Officially no gain on that last play, second down and 10. Here's Quatman in motion again. Fake handoff. Parker going over the top for Cowens. Makes the catch at the nine-yard line. What an unbelievable throw and an even more impressive catch. Great touch by Parker, but how about Cowens to have the attention to be able to grab that? He had the defender draped all over him. He's in the air. He's falling down and a tremendous completion. There's pass interference on the play, as we saw. It looks like there might have been a little bit of a push on Cowens, or against Cowens, rather. So that penalty is declined, and LCC in business. After another Citizens National Bank first down, it is first and goal at the eight. And we are in the eyesight of Lima and Delphus red zone. Thank you, Nate. I'm going to go get my eyes checked after the game today. <laughs> Coach Palti's got to be happy with what he's seeing out of this offensive front from LCC. Very young. Here's Parker pushing the pile up the middle, out to the five-yard line before he's pushed back a little bit. It's a gain of three, and you know something the the youth was talked about before yesterday, or I'm sorry, last week's game. LCC only four seniors on the team, and. Uh, they grew up a lot, it seemed, after that game with Shawnee. They did. They started off a little slow, just kind of maybe, you know, some of those nerves, you know, first varsity game under the big lights, things like that. But then after that, they really seemed to grow up from the beginning of that game to the end of it. They were creating holes. Carson was taking advantage of it, and they have continued that here today. That offensive line is giving him time. They're making holes for the running backs. They are doing a great job. Second and goal now, the ball at the four-yard line. And Parker going left side on the QB keeper and contact right there at the four-yard line and not letting go. Connor Gagne wrapping the legs up and bringing him down, and that'll bring up third down. Look there for a second like Parker was going to be able to get in as he cut back, but a great job to stay disciplined, to plant your feet, and not let him get by. So now third down and goal coming up. Coming up on four minutes remaining in the... Leland Smith first quarter. All tied at seven on Lee's famous recipe chicken scoreboard. Third and goal, Parker gonna keep it. Gets off tackle, gets in to the end zone, touchdown. Extra effort that time by Parker to get in. You kind of saw as he went off that left side, there wasn't much of a hole, but he almost turned himself sideways to squeeze through there and to get into the end zone. Parker with a Lodix Jewelry touchdown, and LCC reclaims the lead 13-7 with just under four minutes remaining here in the first quarter. Eight minutes of gameplay, three touchdowns already. We're in for a barn burner today. Absolutely. The weather is perfect. Not too hot, not too cold. Good afternoon for football, and the teams are scoring like it. Snap, hold, kick is up, and it is no good. 3.53 remaining in the first quarter. It is 13-7, LCC on top. We'll be back.
Welcome back. Dr. Unterbrink at the eyesight of Lima and Delphus provides quality, comprehensive eye care to Lima, Delphus, and surrounding areas. They are our Red Zone sponsor. Visit the eyesightoflima.com for more information. And today's extra point sponsor is Fat Jack's Pizza. Get to Fat Jack's Pizza before or after the game and enjoy their delicious pizza, fun games, and cold drinks. And Leland Smith Insurance is our quarter sponsor. Your first call for all your insurance needs and what a first quarter it has been 13 to 7 lcc on top three drives three touchdowns if you're offensively minded you love it if you're defensive minded well you know there's always the rather three quarters yeah you know these head coaches are torn too because they love what they're seeing into their offenses but on the other side they have just got to be frustrated that so far the defense is not really even putting up much of a fight as it has been easy for both sides to get things going offensively there has been really no struggles and really very few even third down conversions needed uh, between the two teams. The offenses have been able to do uh, pretty much whatever they want. LCC and Delphi St. John's have had, uh, a, it seems like a pretty good mix so far. They've had some some big plays for nice yardage, and they've also just been able to just grind down the field also. And yeah, well, that was one of the keys that we talked about prior to the game was limit those big plays. But here in the early going, both sides have been able to do that. We saw the, the great play by Cowens on, on the pass play. We've seen tremendous runbacks in the kicking game. So these defenses are going to have to clamp down. Squibber right to the 30-yard line, and El St. John's takes it out to the 40 four-yard line as Metzger brings it out there and now Delphi St. John's will try and keep the offensive onslaught going as they will try and start their second drive and end it with six points. He saw St. John's there change the strategy up a little bit. Must not think that they can get it to the end zone so didn't want to risk another run back. Just went ahead and squibbed that one so they had a chance to get the tackle but St. John's going to go back to work here looking to see if they can keep things going on the ground. Ball on the 44, here's Grant Ohm looking on first down, pass complete here at the near side. Braden Pullman coming up with it. S tackle made by Matthew Quatman. Yeah, just as, as soon as I say it looks like they want to try to keep things going on the ground, they go right to the air, a lot like what LCC did their second drive. LCC's first drive looked like it was all ground. Come out second drive, go to the air. Delphi St. John's, same thing. Very uh, similar approaches and... You know, if this keeps up, we're going to start looking to see if there's someone passing playbooks back and forth <laughs> on each side of the field. Someone's a Tecmo Bowl fan. That's all, that's all I'm suggesting. Yeah, on the second down play, that didn't go according to plan as TJ Wirtz is brought down in the backfield by a host of T-Birds. Lewis Knott's back there on the stop. No, actually, he got, he got us both that time, Patrick. It was actually a, uh, a, a, oh, a gosh. slight of yep. hand handoff that time, and it led to a big gain for the Blue Jays. I, I was following the play in the backfield as well. <laughs> it's like, ah, and he's down. Nope. First down. All right. So, says his National Bank first down. I mentioned about getting my eyes checked. That was a joke earlier. Now I think I'm more serious about it. <laughs> All in motion, handoff going. This is Tyler Lindemann, and Lindemann is stopped by Carson Parker around the 29-yard line. Lindemann has a nice pickup on first down. Make this second and manageable, but Parker coming up from that safety position. They kind of just let him play center field back there and, and do what he has to do, and you saw him come up and deliver a big hit to get that stop. Parker, in addition to the passing and rushing numbers he put up last week, also had an interception, so they like Coach Palti likes what he does out there, and he makes the big play there on first down. Second down and five coming up for Delphi St. John's. Ohm, quick pass and incomplete. Was well, looking for Drew Boggs out there and goes through his hands. Third down and five coming up. It looks like Boggs might have just taken his eyes off of that for just a second. He had green in front of him. I think he probably got a little excited wanting to grab that so he could make a move as Cowan was closing quickly. But if he was going to be able to cut that up, Cowan might have flown right by him for a big pickup. So third down and five, 228 remaining in the Leland Smith first quarter, 13 to seven, LCC on top. And now here's Ulm with the keeper going right side, picks up a nice block, out to the 15, picks up another nice block, makes a nice, it goes into the end zone for 
a Lodix Jewelry touchdown. What a tremendous run by all. They had all sorts of space on that right side. A great play call, but then all made it happen. Cowan saw it coming, and as Cowan decides to peel off to try to get that stop, Alm just lowers the shoulder, delivers the big hit, and able to finish for the touchdown. Breaks a tackle, trucks a defender, and ties this one up at 13. Taking another look at that one on the Web Insurance Agency replay. Web Insurance serving Lima Allen County as the kick is up, and it is good. So St. John's with an answer in the form of seven points, and they take their first lead of the day, 14 to 13 on top of LCC. Now will the T-Birds return serve? 2.20 remaining in the first quarter. We'll be back. Welcome back. Today's presenting sponsor is Union Bank. Union Bank committed to you. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's, our scoreboard sponsor. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens. And our instant replay is tonight, sponsored by Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years, with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. And plenty of plays so far in this one. A 14-13 lead for Delphi St. John's here with 2.20 remaining in the Leland Smith first quarter as we are back underway to football action here on WOSN. LCC bringing it out from the four yard line out to the 26 yard line before Cowens takes a hit. Cowens had a little bit of a opening there. I don't think that he saw the St. John's defender as he was coming through. And Cowan took a big hit, a little low. He looks shaken up. I think he may have to uh, go off onto the sidelines here. So I saw the knee buckle a little bit. He got up and was able to. And I was he, he jogged off, but no, he's going to stay on the field, stay it in. looks like. Yep. Cowan's has had a big game so far for LCC. That would be a big loss for them if he has to come off. So toughening through this one after that hard hit. Ball on the 27 for this next drive for LCC. Parker back to pass and incomplete. Looking for Cowens there on the far side. And I'll bring up second down. Cowens had some space. Just looked like he might have lost his footing as he tried to come back to that one. So. so a couple of personnel changes. Dakota Gerdeman coming in for LCC. The 5'10", 162-pound sophomore is, there's going to be uh, no shortage of underclassmen getting opportunities for Scott Palti's offense here in 2023. And here is Quatman getting on the far side, has some space and pushed out of bounds eventually around the 45-yard line. Matthew Quatman using his speed that time to get around the edge. And it looks like he stepped out of bounds short, but a nice pickup on second down to make it third and short. T.J. Wirtz in there on the stop, and you're right, Nate. It's going to be third down and two coming up for LCC, one of the rare third downs we've seen for either side. And the St. John's crowd getting into it here on third and team, imploring their defense to make a stop. Here's Parker, jump pass, looking for Cowens, flag. In the middle of the field, however, is. And I think Cowan just was happened to come across, but I believe that that one was meant for Billy Burke, who got tied up with the St. John's defender. Pretty much had to kind of just push him down to try to get around him. That's what drew the flag. So that's going to be offensive pass interference against LCC. So they will take the penalty, and it's going to be third down. Let's see where they officially spot it. We're imagine it's going to be about third down and. They declined the penalty. I was wondering, would it make sense to decline the penalty? The pass was incomplete. So that'll bring up fourth down and two. Yeah, it makes more sense for them to try to force this punt. I'm not real sure that you want to give Parker and this LCC offense another opportunity to pick up a first down. And we'll see if, you know, what the problem is when your quarterback is also your punter, the, the fake is always a possibility. We'll see what they decide to do here on fourth and two. St. John's back to receive the punt, and that's exactly what LCC will do. Parker 
Punts it out, takes a bounce at the 36 yard line and downed at the 31 yard line. So St. John's with a defensive stop and now their offense will come out and an opportunity for St. John's to increase their lead, but maybe LCC able to get a defensive stop. Yeah, LCC has got to find some way defensively here to get a stop. They, St. John's was helped by that penalty by the LCC offense. We'll see now if the defense can try to come out here and put a stop to this bleeding, because <laughs> right now, Delphi St. John's has them guessing, and it's been pretty easy for the Blue Jay offense. Ball at the 32 now, first down and 10 for Delphi St. John's as we're under two minutes remaining in the Leland Smith first quarter. And we're going to have a Metzger Financial Services timeout as St. John's wants to talk this one over. So just under two minutes remaining here in the first quarter. And, you know, it's, the, it's week two of the high school football season, and you still have teams that are trying to figure a lot of things out. But really what you've seen so far from – these teams, this is my first time being able to see these teams this year, is you know, they look pretty good. They don't look like they're only playing their second game of the season. Yeah, absolutely. You know, they both had big first uh, week ones. And then, you know, week two, you know, to me is adjustment week. You know, you get a chance to see, you know, okay, you, you work all summer, you're going into that first game. You, know, you, you think you might know, but you're still trying to work some stuff out. You get out there, you see what works, what doesn't work, and then you have to make those adjustments. And the biggest jump for most teams is between week one and week two as some things are now settled. But when you come out and you put 42 points on the board, as both of these offenses did and the defenses played pretty good um, as well, you know, it, it's kind of hard to, to tweak things. So there's still some stuff that they're, that they're trying to find out about it themselves. Defense is looking to answer questions. Obviously, offenses so far have answered quite a few. 27 combined points so far in the first quarter between the two teams, and there could be more. St. John's with the football is we're getting back to action. First down and 10 at the 32-yard line. Wirtz and Feathers back there, and Feathers is the guy who gets the pitch, slips at the 30-yard line. It's going to be a loss of two. Second down. LCC and a couple people in the backfield. Carson Hefner was in back there initially, and then you saw Carson Parker come up as well. That forced the running back to try to cut back, lost his footing, so no gain there on first down. So officially a loss of one. Second down and 11. Coming up on the final minute of this Leland Smith first quarter. And the play comes in. Ohm, back to pass, looking, going across the middle, and the pass incomplete, and the flags come out as number 12 a little early there on the contact. That was Josh Young for LCC. And yeah, Josh Young, a first-year starter, the sophomore, tried to time that one up to see if he couldn't get through the uh, offensive player and knock that one down. But too much body contact. and They saw a big penalty on the other side. Stall their drive and a penalty on the other side. This time is going to extend it for the Blue Jays. A pass was intended for Connor Gagne, and the defensive pass interference will give them a Citizens National Bank first down. So that moves the ball to the 46-yard line. As we come up on 61 seconds, we are at 61 seconds left in this first quarter. Ball the 46, blitz coming, Ohm with time, pass incomplete, looking at the 40-yard line as the pass was intended for uh, Maddox Krieger, number 21. That time LCC came in with the rush as Ohm had a receiver, but Billy Burke did a great job on the defensive side of things to make sure he timed that one up, didn't want to pick up another pass interference call and knock that one away. That was probably Riley Mueller, number 24. That pass was intended for it. Second down and 10. Fake handoff, Alm looking across the middle again to Gagne. This time he's got him, and the pass 
complete down to the 28-yard line. The tackle made by Josh Young, and that's good for another Citizens National Bank first down. A great route ran that time. Was able to get to the inside as, uh, as Gagne was able to get the DB to turn. Josh Young took a bite on the outside. He's open on the inside. And great pass by Alm. Gagne heads to the sideline. He'll be replaced by Braylon Metzger here. First down and 10 at the 27-yard line. This will most likely be the last play of the first quarter. And some miscommunication issues there, I think, as there's another Metzger Financial Services timeout taken by St. John's. And that is their second timeout. We will take the timeout as well. 14 to 13, St. John's on top. We'll be back. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Also, tonight's first down sponsor is Citizens National Bank. See how we're building businesses one relationship at a time at CNBOhio.com. 21 seconds left in the Leland Smith first quarter. St. John's with a 14 to 13 lead and looking for more. First down and 10, ball on the LCC 27. And Ulm is gonna keep it. Had words for blockers, but not able to get past the line as the tackle made at the 25 yard line. Yeah, it's probably gonna bring the first quarter to a close. Been an offensive powerhouse here so far, but Delphi St. John's came up with the first stop, and they got a chance here as they start the second quarter to open this one up a little. We'll switch sides a 34-minute first quarter in real time. Second quarter coming up, 14 to 13. St. John's on top of LCC. We're back after this on WOSN. Second quarter action ready to get started. Lottox Jewelry, your family owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years is today's touchdown sponsor. Visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert or online at Lottox.com. And our red zone sponsor is the eyesight of Lima and Delphus. Dr. Unterbrink at the eyesight provides quality comprehensive eye care to Lima, Delphus and surrounding areas. Visit the eyesight of Lima.com for more information. Back here at Champions Field at Stadium Park, Patrick Hamler, Nate Garlock here with you. St. John's coming close to the eyesight of Lima and Delphus red zone. We'll see if they can get it closer here. Second down and six ball on the 23-yard line. LCC still looking for that big defensive stand as Delphus St. John's offense has just been too much for them here in this first half. St. John's. Perfect on scoring drives, and here on second and six, Ulm on the keeper, and Parker uh, trying to rip that one away. We'll have to settle for the tackle as the gain of about three is made. It's going to bring up a third down and I think they're going to say six coming up. So he didn't pick up very much, about two, three yards on that play. You know, Ulm's feet have really been the difference, especially um, here, even just this season, but especially here in this game is, He's been able to dance around and find some openings. If you're the LCC defense, though, you know, you see that in practice every day, you know, it, with uh, how Carson plays, you think you'd be able to kind of make some of those adjustments, but we're still waiting on that T-Bird defense to do that. Rare third down coming up here as they get the playoff just in time. Ohm looking end zone corner, and the pass is nearly intercepted. Coming away there with the near interception with the SWAT at the very minimum, Dakota Gerdeman making the stop for LCC, and that's going to bring up Delphi St. John's fourth, first fourth down of the day. Yeah, Gerdeman did a great job locating that football, making sure he kept his eyes on it. Just missed out on that interception, but it does bring up fourth down as it looks like Delphi St. John's is going to go for it. That does indeed look to be the case. Fourth and four, ball in the 21. And a chance for LCC to get off the field. Play clock down to five seconds. 
And they do get it off. Ulm looking to pass. Pass is complete to the 15-yard line. And shaking the tackle from Billy Burke. Ball pops out. I believe it was down. And they're going to rule it down at the three-yard line. So the pass complete to Joel Schrader. Schrader did a great job of not going down, fighting through those arm tackles, delivered a stiff arm to keep going. And fortunately for St. John's, and it's probably more fortunate for LCC, as it kept Delphi St. John's from scoring a touchdown as that ball was knocked loose after he was down. That's the Citizens National Bank first down, and we're in the eyesight of Lyman and Delphi's red zone for St. John's first and goal at the two. Ohm pitches out to Feathers. Feathers looking for the corner and has it for a Lonex Jewelry touchdown. It was just a foot race to that edge as Feathers was trying to outrun Burke. And Burke not able to catch up to him as the Delphi St. John's offense has just continued to be able to march right through this Thunderbird defense. St. John's needing a key fourth down conversion to keep the drive alive, and they score shortly thereafter. In fact, the very next play, they put it in for six, and now the Fat Jack's Pizza extra point will be attempted. They are perfect on extra points so far, and this one is the same, up and good. 10-29 remaining in the Leland Smith second quarter. It's a 21-13 Delphi St. John's lead here on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's Extra Point sponsor is Fat Jack's Pizza. Get to Fat Jack's Pizza before or after the game and enjoy their delicious pizza, fun games, and ice-cold drinks. Delphi St. John's with a, another touchdown drive, and they are perfect. Three for three on drives and touchdowns. They have a 21-13 lead over LCC. Patrick Hamler, Nate Garlock with you. High above the center of Champions Field here at Stadium Park, and this one has been a shootout so far. Yeah, absolutely. LCC looking to answer as Cowan's going to have to pick that one up, gathers it in. He does so at the 10, shakes a couple of tackles, but it seems like the numbers game is going to catch up, and indeed it will. He is brought down between the 15 and the 20-yard line. Looks like they're going to mark him down at the 18, between the 17 and the 18. So plenty of green in front of LCC as they prepare for their next drive, and they were two for two before getting stopped on their last drive, and now they'll see if they can get back on the scoring track. Yeah, and it, you know that last play um, of their last drive where they had the penalty called against them, it was set up nicely and it was there. If Burke doesn't get tied up with the St. John's player, that probably goes for a touchdown. So outside of, of that one hiccup, both these offenses have looked tremendous. In some cases, mirror images of each other. Here is a quick pass screen on first down and the pass is complete, flag out. At the end of the play as a helmet comes loose, Michael Quatman with the catch, and it looks like it's going to be holding against LCC, so the modest gain will be wiped out by the penalty. I believe this one might be on Cowens as he was out trying to block for Quatman, and the official was right there quick to throw that flag. So Cowens was the one that seemed to have the most visceral reaction to it. The St. John's... Defender, who I think was Joel Schrader on that play, lost his helmet. Always glad to see that the head is not inside the helmet when it's rolling down the field. That's the one key element you look for when that comes off. Yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> Head's not in there? All right, good. Second down. Yeah. It's so first down and... Looks like 15. Ball spotted the 13-yard line. And this is Quadman who's going to get it. And in trouble, back behind the line of scrimmage. And he is brought down. I'm trying to see who that was over there. Riley Mueller was in on the stop. He did a Thank great you. job coming off of that edge as that jet sweep has been there all night long for LCC, but that time Mueller able to get into the backfield quickly and stuff that one out. Loss of one on that play, second down and 16. LCC not 
been behind the sticks very often in this game, really the entire season so far, although I know that's only about five quarters. But they're behind the sticks on this drive here as Cowens with the catch at the 18-yard line before he is brought down right there as the tackle made by Cohen Martz, number three. Makes this third and manageable as a nice pickup for LCC. Only five yards, but third and 10 looks a whole lot different than third and 15. So without a doubt, there's, there's some plays in the playbook for third and 10. There's not a whole lot in there for third and 15. So a couple of changes being made, and it looks like uh, they're saying LCC took a timeout. The officials, yeah, they say LCC. So they're going to take a Metzger Financial Services timeout, and we'll keep it here at 834 remaining in the Leland Smith second quarter as it's an eight-point lead, and you, you kind of feel the momentum starting to ever so subtly swing over to Delphi St. John's side. That you feel like they can get a stop here. They can get seven more points on the board. Then it's starting to look like something where maybe you start taking the air out of the tires of the LCC offense and defense. Yeah, and you can tell that this St. John's defense is really starting to ride that wave of momentum off of, you know, and it's been off of LCC mistakes. You know, you had the penalty. That led to the first punt. Another penalty here put LCC way behind schedule. You know, and now they're pretty deep in their zone, too. So if they can get a stop here, force another punt, they're going to get great field position again. And, you know, they can really seize everything here before halftime. So third down and 10 coming up for LCC. The T-Birds, longest third down of the day, I do believe, and another opportunity for the St. John's defense to get off the field. Parker rolling out on third down. Pressure coming, hit as he throws, going long, and that is going to be a little bit too long for Quatman, the intended receiver. And it's going to be fourth down. And he had uh, Joel Schrader breathing down his neck. It's a miscommunication that time as Parker was trying to get the ball to Quatman on the far sideline. And the play call came in. Parker thought he was going to continue to run. Quatman put the brakes on. It was actually coming back when Parker let that ball go. And unfortunately for LCC, that means another punt. So that is two drives that LCC has been stopped on, and now St. John's will get the football back, probably in pretty good field position, depending on how Parker's punt goes, and it is up. Nice punt there to the 40-yard line, and it's going to be fielded from there, and Feathers taking it out to the 40-yard line. Don't know if he slipped or slid or whatever happened there at 50, but he got 10 more yards out of it. Yeah, another nice return. So you know, the kicking game is really working in St. John's' favor. They've had some good returns. And now they're going to be on the plus side of the field. So St. John's with an eight-point lead on the Lee's Famous Recipe scoreboard here in the Leland Smith second quarter. And so far, St. John's perfect on the day in scoring touchdowns on drives. This is their fourth drive, and they'll be looking for touchdown number four. As the play comes in from the sideline. Down to four on the play clock. They do get it off, and it's going to be a keeper for Ulm. Down to the 34-yard line before he is wrapped up. Alm had a little trouble with the snap that time as it came in a little weird, but able to gather it up. And then a big pickup on first down as that offensive line of St. John just continues to create space and Alm is taking advantage. Caden Fulke in there on the stop for LCC. Second down and four now. A little bit of a block there for Alm as he takes the snap and picks up. I don't know if he picked up anything on that. Looks like they're going to mark him down right at the line of scrimmage. So third down and four coming up. Yeah, Caden Fulke did a great job of timing up that snap. He was coming in on the blitz and timed it up almost perfectly. He was in the backfield quickly and was able to stop that one for no gain. 
So now third down and four as the LCC defense looking to stiffen up and try and get off the field for the first time today. Gagne in motion for Ulm. Handoff faked Ulm. Looking downfield. Pass is incomplete. Billy Burke in there on the coverage. Pass intended for number 21, Max Krigger. Burke was on defense that time, and there was some contact. It looked like maybe that far official was reaching towards his waistband, like maybe he was going to call it or throw that flag, but decided not to. It's going to bring up fourth down for St. John's. And I think LCC might get their first opportunity to get this St. John's offense off the field without any points. So it looks like there was contact on that play, but the pass, even if there had been no contact, was probably not catchable, which is what it sounds like the official decided. So St. John's, their first punt of the day. And a chance to pin LCC deep in their own territory. And this play will be blown dead as a flag comes out. Looks like delay of game. That yeah, looked like one where I think they were okay with that one as that was coming in. Gives them about five more yards to play right. with. Hopefully trying to pin LCC deep in, the, in their own area. Giving the punter about five more yards to play with. Burke back to receive. Back there along with Carson Parker. Billy Burke's name, we haven't called a whole lot uh, as far as catching passes. The St. John's defense has done a pretty nice job. Here's the coffin corner, and I'll tell you what, it doesn't get much better than that. We'll nope. see where the official actually marks it down. That one's going to be inside the 10, easily going to be marked down at the seven yard line. Yeah, a great punt that time as it looked like those uh, extra five yards that they had to play with worked out perfectly. So LCC, 6.38 left to go here in the half, and they're going to have to go a long way to try to get a score. About halfway through this one, and Ty's timeouts brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit Metzger Financial Services. Dot com. I want to thank all of our sponsors for their support of tonight's broadcast. And for those of you watching, we cannot continue to bring high school football sports action uh, without your support. Considering making a donation today to TV44, you can go to WTLW.com forward slash donate. Go there for more information. So neither team called that timeout. That's actually an official's timeout. You know, we talked about weather and heat and all that, those things, and that turf makes it seem even hotter. So officials timeout, let teams get a little bit of extra water here. And that way, so neither team will be charged with that timeout. So we'll get back to action now. It's LCC with the football deep in their own territory at the seven yard line. Man in motion, and this is going to be Parker with the keeper on first down out to the 10-yard line, and that's about it. Parker with a patient run that time. Didn't try to do too much. Just saw some space and picked up the yardage that he could. Still a positive play for LCC. Blue Jays on defense. Seem to have their ears pinned back a little bit more. They seem to be more aggressive coming after the football. The... The LCC offense doesn't seem to be mystifying them quite as much as maybe it was in the early going of the first quarter. So we'll see how that unfolds here. This is Parker on second down, pass complete, out to the 15-yard line to the 16, and that's Billy Burke, his first catch of the day, brings up a third down in about three. Yeah, you just mentioned how we hadn't called his name in the passing game. Here on this drive, they get him involved early, and that's enough for a first down. It is indeed a Citizens National Bank first down. You know, last week Burke had a huge game, went over for a, went over 100 yards receiving, had a touchdown, and played a big part in that win against Shawnee. So far, a little quiet. See if that gets him warmed up. Four catches, 187 yards last week in the win against Shawnee, and now here's Quatman receiving the handoff, going far side there on first down, out to the 20, 21 yard line before he is pushed out of bounds. Connor Gagne, among others, in on the stop. 
Yeah, and that's something that LCC wanted to do. You know, last week, Michael, uh, or excuse me, Matthew Quatman um, got carries, had right around 90 yards on the game, but a lot of those came late in the game when LCC was just more interested in getting the clock to, to run down. They wanted to get him more involved early, trying to take some of those hits off of Parker, and they've done a good job here so far in the first half. Ball into the 21, second down and six, and LCC really doesn't need to be in any kind of rush. They can take the final five minutes of this clock down and score and be right there in this one is the handoff going inside. That's Quatman again, and he'll pick up about two. A couple different Blue Jays in on that stop as he had some traffic, but makes this one third and short. Say Gagne and Schrader, I think we're in there on that stop. So now third down and four. Coming up for LCC, and as we mentioned, they are in no rush. Coming up on four minutes left in the Leland Smith second quarter. Parker in the gun. Third and four, Parker looking to throw. Pass complete to Quatman. Iron there on the far side. That's gonna be good for a Citizens National Bank first down as he is pushed out of bounds past the 30-yard line. And Parker got rid of that one quickly, just a timing route, as that ball had already left Parker's hands before Quatman turned around to find it. They have great chemistry, been playing football for a long time, and you saw it right there, and helped LCC extend this drive. Braylon Metzger in there on the stop. 3.45 left in this second quarter. It's an eight-point lead for Delphi St. John's on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken Scoreboard. Parker on the keeper with a fresh set of sticks, and Pyle getting pushed a little ahead as he uses all of those 210 pounds to move it forward for about a two-yard gain. And yeah, no real reason why they should even have been able to pick up that many. It actually ended up being about a four-yard gain. Yeah, they gain. gave him two more on that. And it looked like that one was going to be stopped right at the line of scrimmage, but Parker kept driving, and his teammates got behind him, got that little extra... What is that, the, the, the bush push? Is that what they call that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, got himself a, a few extra yards. Student body middle. Man in motion. Now another man in motion. This is Quatman, fake handoff. Parker looking to pass, complete to Cowens at the 39-yard line. Great job by Cowens that time to adjust to that ball. That one was actually behind him, so he had to put the brakes on, falling down. And Cowens has had a great game. He's, he had a quiet first game against Shawnee, but is really coming alive here. He's been a more active part of the LCC offense this week. That's good for a Citizens National Bank first down. As the T-Birds methodically moving the ball down the field, now at the 39-yard line. Two and a half minutes remaining in the Leland Smith second quarter. Parker looking to throw, pump face, looking for Cowens again, and just outside of his reach, double covered on the play. Gagne and Martz in there on the coverage for Delphi St. John's. Cowan had done a nice job on the double move. He had gotten the DB to bite as he had came in and then used his speed to get by him. The safety help came, but that ball just out of his reach as it looked like it was going to sail out of bounds either way. But 2.20 to go, they still have two outs, or two timeouts, excuse me, <laughs> wrong sport, two timeouts, but and you mentioned they're not in much of a hurry, but still on the wrong side of the 50. At a certain point, they are going to have to get a little bit going as they don't want the clock to run out on them. Here's Parker on second down and 10. Making some guys miss. Trucks another guy. He's down to the 45, 46 yard line. And that's what he does so well. He had multiple guys in position to stop him, and you think he's going to stop, or, and you think he's going to be put down for a, a loss, and then somehow he still comes out of it with plus yardage. So that brings up third down and four as we go under two minutes in this one. The second quarter, I should say. Not the entire game, just the second quarter. Parker back to pass, in trouble. Let's it go, looking for Quatman downfield and pass is knocked away. Quatman would have had a tough time bringing that one in in any case and nice third down stop and that'll bring up fourth down and 
decision time here for Scott Palti. Do you, do you take a shot or do you punt it and go into the halftime down eight? You know, looks like maybe they're, they are going to go ahead and punt this one away. As see the personnel change coming in for LCC. I thought he might take this one, but with a minute 28 left to go, he didn't want to risk giving it back to St. John's with a short field. That looks to be the case. Some motion here, and we're going to have a timeout. A Metzger Financial Services timeout. St. John's takes their final timeout of the half. We'll take it as well. 127 left in the first half. It's a 21-13 St. John's lead here on WOSN. Welcome back. The quarter sponsor, Leland Smith Insurance, Insurance Services, your first call for all your insurance needs. St. John's called that timeout because I think they thought that LCC was lining up for a fake, and we were talking during the break. I thought that might lead LCC to try to go for it as St. John's is out of timeouts, only a minute 27 left to go. And now they're going to shift formations again. So LCC still doing quite a lot of movement out there for a punt. And indeed, that's what will happen. And almost blocked as that one goes and takes a nice LCC bounce. Feathers decides to field it at the 16-yard line. So you almost wonder if maybe they're Courtney. trying to set something up for later in the game with all that movement there. That could very well be the case. So it'll be first and 10 for St. John's. And uh, as you mentioned, St. John's with no timeouts remaining. And you have to think that perhaps They'll run a couple plays, down it a couple times, and send this one to half. But who knows? They got trips right, so we'll see what happens. Almost had a lot of success on his feet. He's, he's found holes. He, we can't imagine they're going to put this one in the air. Gagne in motion, and he takes the handoff, makes the guy miss. And he's going to pick up about four yards before he is pushed out of bounds. Good job by Gane to get to the sideline, get out of bounds, stop the clock. Gerdeman in on the stop. And as you said, that will stop the clock with 1.10 remaining. So maybe the intention is to run the ball, but you think, you know, with the formation, possibility of breaking something is, is still there. That clock stopping does help LCC, though. If they can get a couple of stops here, they could get the ball back. Here is Gertz on second down, and nice push forward. And he's going to pick up about two yards. And we are going to have a timeout, so LCC takes a Metzger Financial Services timeout. And uh, you're absolutely right. That worked out, seemed to work out in LCC's favor. They have, they have one timeout remaining. It's going to be third and three, one timeout left for LCC. If they can get a stop here, they'll use that last timeout, get the ball back, and you know could have an inter interesting uh, end to this half. Yeah, so St. John's has, I don't want to necessarily say dominant, I think the momentum's been in their favor here in the second quarter, but you look at it and LCC gets the football back here. They put a, they put a score up. It's a tie game or a one-point lead for Delphi St. John's heading into halftime. And I think if you're LCC, too, you're, you're going to look back and think that you're pretty fortunate that this is still just a one-score game. You've had some penalties. You've made some mistakes that have really put you behind schedule, but they've gotten the stops when they needed it to make sure that this stayed a one-possession game, and here they are on third down with an opportunity to potentially get the ball back before halftime. That's even bigger considering that uh, Delphi St. John's will be receiving coming out of the locker room. Absolutely right. So we'll see what St. John's decides to do here. Third down and three, ball on the 30. 101 remaining in the first half. LCC corners are playing far back, so those short little pass may be there. And we're going to have a stoppage here, a flag, and false start against St. John's. And that makes it a little bit more difficult now. Third and three just became third and eight, so that's a big play and a fortunate break for the Thunderbirds. Like I said, 
This formation doesn't look like it's going to change very much, if at all, for St. John's. Is so they're making an adjustment to the clock, adding a second. They had a second run down on the false start. And we mentioned the first quarter being about 34 minutes of real time. We're coming up on half hour in this one as well. So this has been a great day if you were out watching this game to get some sun, use some sunscreen. And certainly enjoy a football broadcast here on WOSN. Here is Feathers on third down, third and eight. Has the first down and then some. do -si do to the 45 and eventually brought down at midfield for a Citizens National Bank first down. And 51 seconds remaining, they're going to speed up the offense. What a huge play by Feathers. He had a gigantic hole. He took advantage of it and what looked like a potential big stop for the LCC t defense leads to an opportunity here for the St. John's offense. Another big conversion on third down and now on first down. Alm with the slant pass out complete at the 42 yard line as Schrader makes the catch and that stops the clock and now Delphi St. John's turn it right back around. Their offense in business with 29 seconds to go in the half. And EJ Jones on the stop for the Thunderbirds as he had to drive that receiver out of bounds. Got the and the clock continues to run. Second down and two. Ohm pump fakes. Looks near side. Pass complete out of bounds. Their catch made by Tyler Lindemann. Yeah, Lindemann wanted to make sure that there was going to be no doubt that time that he got out of bounds on his own power to make sure that that clock stopped. And just like that, 15 seconds left in the first half. St. John's down at the 30. You know, this is one of the weaknesses of that secondary of LCC. They do play off a lot from the receivers, and St. John's obviously has recognized that, and they're taking advantage. These five, six, seven-yard pass plays towards the sidelines are there, and they're making sure that they convert. And then as they close up, you got to think that they can go over the top if they want to. Here's Alm in trouble. Scrambles out of it. Get to the third. He's going to take it himself and drop to the 25-yard line. It's going to pick up five, and that is going to bring this quarter to an end. They will not get another play off, and that will do it for this first half. Delphi St. John's with a 21-13 lead over Lima Central Catholic. Second half activities coming up when we come back on WOSN. Halftime wrapping up here at Champions Field, the Stadium Park, Delphi St. John's with a 21-13 lead over Lima Central Catholic as we bring you third quarter action coming up. Today's presenting sponsor for today's contest is Union Bank. Union Bank committed to you. And the scoreboard, sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphi, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens. Thought we were going to get a... Shootout in this one, still a pretty decent scoring affair. Uh, only one touchdown in the second quarter, giving St. John's a 21 to 13 lead. And it'll be interesting to see what adjustments each team makes coming out for the second half. Yeah, and I think the big thing, obviously, you know, we kind of talked, like you had said, like this was going to be a shootout. The defenses were really struggling. You know, offenses were moving up and down. But then when you look up at the scoreboard, 21-13, it was 14-13 uh, after the first quarter, just one touchdown there in the second. And the defenses got stops when they needed to, but it was more sometimes the offenses that were stopping themselves. We saw penalties. Um, you know, We saw things that were really killing drives on their own and putting them in third and long situations. Um, so both these teams obviously still going to want to tweak that defense. They, they want to try to get some three and outs. Uh, we had a long first half. Uh, so, obviously, they want to start getting that clock running a little bit, get the running games going. But those defenses, they need them to continue to step up as these offenses are just looking for opportunities. Both teams allowing more points than they did all of last week as we get ready for the third quarter to get started here from Champions Field. St. John's will get the football first to start out. And uh, both teams really running... Uh, similar offenses, really mirror images of each other in a lot of ways. They've both got uh, big, strong guys at quarterback. They've both got pretty potent running uh, attacks. They've got wide receivers that you know mirror each other in a, in a lot of different ways. And the uh, 
the defenses have stepped up, as you mentioned. Um, it, it really is kind of like looking at yourself and saying, okay, what is the best strategy I can have to beat myself? Yeah, that, absolutely. You know, we've seen Alm do a nice job on his feet. He's thrown some really great balls. On the other side, you know, normally the story is Carson Parker, and he has played great, nothing to take away from him. But, you know, Milan Cowens has really ha had a tremendous first half for LCC. We saw him make a couple of really big catches. He had a couple of good returns for the T-Birds as well. So when they can have other playmakers step up, it just makes them that much more dangerous. And if they can get Parker going here in the second half, along with continuing that production out of other players, you know, it could be, you know, the, um, the spark that they're looking for. Gagne fields the kick as the second half is underway out to the 32-yard line. So the Blue Jays, that is where they will take over, and we'll see how Grant Ohm prosecutes the offense here in the third quarter. We saw Feathers, uh, number five, Colin Feathers, had a great run there at the end of the second half as it looked like LCC might have been forcing them uh, with about a minute to go to, into a fourth down and get the ball back. Colin Feathers does a great job out of the backfield. He's back with Alm here to start this third quarter. Said execution from both teams has been really good. I mean, it's obvious that these are two uh, well-coached teams between uh, Todd Schulte and Scott Palti, which is no real surprise coming into this one on first down and the handoff going up the middle and only picking up about two yards. Yeah, they went right at the teeth of that LCC defense and end up picking up two yards for their trouble. That was Feathers getting the first carry of the second half. And ball out the 34-yard line. I uh, see they'll officially mark him for about a two-yard gain. So second down and eight coming up. And this is Gertz with a handoff, working that left side and not getting much of anything back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. LCC, a host of T-Birds in there on the stop. Carson Hefner among them for the T-Birds. Third down. Best case scenario for Lima Central Catholic would be to get a stop and get off the field a three and out, which would be the first time that the uh, defense for them would have been able to accomplish that here in this particular contest. Play clock down to five. Ohm gets the snap, dropping back, looking long, and has a man open and cannot come down with it as Cohen Martz incomplete there around the 39, and it looks like the T-Birds are going to get off the field on a three and out. And they are fortunate to do that as Martz had come wide open on that route and just not able to gather that one in. So LCC catches a break, and they're getting an opportunity here to see if uh, they can't do something with their opening drive. Burke and Cowens back deep for the T-Birds, then between the 25, their own 25 and 30-yard line. And Metzger gets this one off for the Blue Jays. Cowens fields it at the 35, at a head of steam. He's across midfield, getting to the 45, and will go out of bounds at the 43-yard line. So nice stop, good field position to start for LCC. Yeah, we mentioned Cowens coming out of halftime in the first half that he had and immediately making an impact here in the third quarter. Caught that one on the run. Is able to get onto the right side of the 50 for LCC. So great field position here as they're trying to equalize this one up. Nose of the football on the 44-yard line as the T-Birds will start their first drive in plus territory. And now it will be up to the Blue Jays to see if their defense can make a stop and get off the field, or if LCC will put points on the board for the first time since the first quarter. Parker, shotgun, quick pass to Quadman there at the 39-yard line, breaks a tackle, gonna be in there for a Citizens National Bank first down. Matthew Quadman is a tough tackle as he had some space that time and was trying to fight through that last defender who just had a hold of his foot and not able to get that. He was pretty close to breaking that one for a long game. A couple of Blue Jays hanging on for dear life, making the tackle. His ball is now at the 32-yard line. Parker alone in the backfield. 
And Parker thinks about and in trouble. Is going to have to run it anyway. Looking across the field, decides to tuck and run. And has some space out across the 20. Makes a guy miss at the 15 to the 10 to the 5. Down at the 2-yard line for a Citizens National Bank first down. Parker, what looked like was going to be a 5-yard sack, turned into a nice 20-plus yard gain for LCC. You're not supposed to be able to do that. <laughs> That is not something that you're going to typically see, especially of a high school player. And you know, I, I, I was joking this week after watching Parker um, last week, and we did it to Shawnee. You know, I was watching a video game character out there, and it looked a lot like that right there as he just continued to make guys miss. Lima eyesight, Delphus, red zone, and they turn that in immediately into a Lodix Julie touchdown. Quatman taking it in, Matthew Quatman from. Four yards out, and just like that, LCC within two points of tying this one up. Two plays ago, it looked like St. John's was going to get a big loss. LCC, you know, looked like they may be pushed way back, facing a third and long. And then here they are, Matthew Quatman off the right side, running it in. and They're going to go for the extra point, so they'll still be down one. And that'll be Quatman to attempt the Fat Jack's Pizza extra point. Choosing not to chase points, and the extra point is up and good. 9.05 remaining in the Leland Smith third quarter. It's a 21-20 St. John's lead here on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's Instant Replay is brought to you by Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. And tonight's Extra Point sponsor is Fat Jack's Pizza. Get to Fat Jack's before or after the game and enjoy their delicious pizza, fun games, and ice-cold drinks. LCC with a 44-yard drive, putting six, seven points up on the board. Matthew Quatman touchdown, rushing touchdown and brings them within one. So you couldn't have started, had the third quarter start much better if you're LCC. Yeah, absolutely. First time you've been able to force a three and out, then a nice return by Cowens, another great play by Carson Parker, and then Matthew Quatman there to finish it off for the touchdown. So they got the momentum back, and they're going to ask their defense to come out here and get another stop. So probably not going to see a long kickoff. We haven't seen this from LCC. Probably going to squib this one. Not quite a squibber, but... It's going to take a bounce to the 20, probably hoping for something like that to happen. Feathers fields it at the six-yard line and is going to be dropped inside the 10. Yeah, that was a tough ball as that bounced almost right at his feet, and it was end over end that time, so it took a, uh, a weird bounce off of the turf. Tough for Feathers to gather that one in, and he had no choice. Had to run back there and get it, try to make something happen, able to get it back up near the 10-yard line, so... The LCC defense has him pinned deep. Sound opportunity for St. John's to answer deep in their own territory. Ball spotted at the 10. And they're going to start with four wide. Wirtz in the backfield along with Grant Ulm. And the handoff up the middle, making a guy fall down before Wirtz is dropped just shy of the 20 yard line. Good for a nine yard pickup on first down. Great play that time, right up the middle. Parker had to come up from his safety position to make that tackle. As the St. John's offense is trying to get back to what was working so well for them in the first half. Worse with a couple of carries in this one, not a lot of action, at least not a lot of action in terms of carrying the football. So we'll see if maybe they want to work him in a little bit more into the offense on this drive. Second down and one. Ohm back to pass. Pump fake in trouble and brought down at the nine yard line for a 10 yard loss as Caden Falky back there on the sack and it's a third down and long coming up. Great job by Falky to get in the backfield and get that sack but that was all made possible by number 12 Josh Young. We saw him have a couple of uh, negative plays there in the first half. But you could tell Alm was trying to go along that sideline and looking for Drew Boggs. John, uh, Young did not bite on the pump fake, stayed right with him. Alm had nowhere to go with that football and had to take the sack. 
It's all that on the Web Insurance Agency instant replay, and now third down and 11 coming up for the Blue Jays. Ohm pressured again, having a roll to his right side and does pass, is going to be complete at the 15-yard line. And that's going to make it fourth down and a little over five as the pass was caught by Drew Boggs. Yeah, Ohm was looking Boggs' way the entire time on that play as well. It was well covered by LCC, kept everything in front of them. It's going to force another three and out. So back-to-back -back three and outs by this LCC defense is exactly what they needed. And St. John's, they're going to punt this one away and ask their defense to try to see if they can't get a stop. Good response by the T-Birds after the nine-yard gain on first down by the Blue Jays. And now Billy Burke will field this one at the 45-yard line and has some space and takes advantage of it. He is down, pushed out of bounds at the 30-yard line. So it'll be another short field for LCC as they get their second drive started. Yeah, field position has been huge here to start this half. It's LCC has been able to start on the right side of the 50 each of their first two possessions. We'll see what they, uh, this offense can do here. They come out for that second possession and an opportunity here to take the lead, which they haven't had in quite a while. Twenty-one twenty, St. John's lead on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken scoreboard and LCC looking to take the lead back. Under seven remaining in the Leland Smith third quarter. Here's Quatman handoff going far side on first down to the 20 yard line. And he is brought down by a host of Blue Jays and LCC starts this drive with a nine yard pickup. And Matthew Quatman one more time is he is a lot more active in this offense than he was last week. And I think that's a good thing, especially for the health of Parker. You definitely don't want him running the ball 25, 30 times every single game. They have a brutal schedule all year long. and You want to be able to make sure that he stays healthy. Matthew Quatman is a tremendous athlete and a good player, so no reason to not let him have the football. Parker had 32 carries, as you mentioned earlier in the game. Had 32 carries last week, and definitely not something you want your quarterback to be doing and have him healthy throughout the season. Here is Parker, though, on the carry. Picks up the Citizens National Bank first down and then some out to the 14-yard line as LCC is back in the eyesight of Lima and Dolphus red zone. Well, that's what it does, too, when you spread that out and spread those carries around. You know, we saw Matthew Coatman work that right side on the counter, is able to pick up some big yardage. And then they're picking their spots with Parker. Instead of just having him pound the, uh, right up the middle each and every time, they're waiting, and they're seeing what the defense is doing. That time, the defense anticipating another handoff on that right side. Parker kept it himself, bounced off the left side, and got the first down. Ball on the 13 now, first down. Parker back to pass, a little bit of time, slant pattern right over the middle of the four-yard line as Quatman comes up with the reception. And that is going to be another Citizens National Bank first down. It's first and goal for the Thunderbirds. We talk about the all-everything Carson Parker, and that was a tremendous pass into a tight window. But how about Matthew Quatman running the ball? Then he goes out wide to receive the ball. He's the place kicker. He, he, he kicks the extra points on this team. He does the kickoffs. He is just as talented and as necessary for this T-Bird team. Ball on the three, first and goal. Here's Quatman once again putting it in for his second touchdown of the half. A Lodix Jewelry touchdown, and LCC is back in the lead. Second touchdown for Matthew Quatman here of this half as he is establishing himself on the ground through the air, doing it all, and he's going to stay on the field now as he's going to kick this extra point as well as LCC is on top for the first time since the first quarter. If we were at Lima Stadium, I would have said Quatman probably sold popcorn before the game or <laughs> was making the drinks or something. I don't know. Helping cook the hot dogs. <laughs> I doubt the folks here at Stadium Park let him do that, though. Here's Quatman with the Fat Jack's Pizza Extra Point is up and good. Thunderbirds, 14 unanswered by the T-Birds. And now with 5.05 left in the Leland Smith third quarter, they lead 27-21 here on WOSN.
Welcome back. Tonight's first down sponsor is Citizens National Bank. See how we're building businesses one relationship at a time at cnbohio.com. And our touchdown sponsor is Lodix Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert or online at lodix.com. Atlanta Central Catholics had two drives and two touchdowns as they now have a 27-21 lead over Delphi St. John's. And now St. John's trying to get the momentum pendulum swinging back their way as LCC has uh, taken control of this one here halfway through the Leland Smith third quarter. And it kind of is starting the, same, the way that the game started. You know, LCC came out. They were able to get their score on their first two possessions, and then that's when they started to sputter. So now it's going to be up to this Blue Jay defense. All right, well, right now it's going to be the offense to get things going. They've gone back-to-back, -back, three and outs, obviously looking for a more sustainable drive here. You know, but they had the momentum taken from them before, and they got it back. They need to do that here. They've done it with short fields, and they've done it with pinning St. John's deep and some good defensive plays, as this one is going to go right out of bounds. And that, uh, well, that official was very right gingerly. on the spot there. He sprinted down to the 34-yard line and placed that flag very gingerly on the turf. Yeah, not quite sure what the, the goal was, as you haven't seen Quatman. He hasn't had the big leg. He hasn't tried to get it deep. They've been more than happy of just kind of squibbing it down the middle. It worked out great the last time, but... This time a big penalty is going to give Delphi St. John some great uh, starting field position. So they're going to spot that at the 37-yard line. St. John's own 37-yard line. So not a bad start for the Blue Jays. That's going to be about, uh, about 25, 30 yards ahead of where they started on their last drive. Ball to 37, first and 10. Seeing that trips right formation for the Blue Jays. Down six, 5.05 left in the third quarter. Pressure coming, Ohm floats this one out. Pass is complete out there to Metzger at the 45 yard line. And that is good for an eight yard gain and a nice start, nine yard gain we'll say for the Blue Jays. Yeah, Metzger was wide open that time. Had to kind of catch that one twice. It looked like it bounced off his hands initially, but good concentration to gather that one back in to make it second and short. Ball on the 46. And uh, really, yeah, 46 yard line, second down and one. Gagne goes in motion, some issues with the snap, and this play is going to be blown dead as a flag comes in there, and it's going to be false start against St. John's. Yeah, I think there might have been some miscommunication on the snap that time as you saw it come low and it was bouncing on the turf when it got back to Alm. And not sure if the center was unsure of when to let that one go or try to pull it back or, or what exactly the case was. But either way, a big penalty that time to make it second and six. So that pushes it back to the 41. As Nate said, second down and six. So this is, this is how the St. John's drive started. A nice gain on first down and then problems throughout. And the pass incomplete. Metzger thinking he was held and the official looks like he agrees. A flag comes out right there at the 48 yard line. And this is most likely gonna be a Citizens National Bank first down for St. John's. Yeah, absolutely. An easy call for the back official. As you saw the uh, secondary and more specifically the cornerbacks of LCC right there towards the uh, Right before the snap came, they closed the distance. They wanted to have press coverage. And EJ Jones was going to get beat pretty bad on that one. But had no choice but to grab a hold of the Blue Jay player. And it was an easy pass interference call. So that will move the ball to the 44-yard line. And the Blue Jays now in plus territory. And Ohm with the keeper on first down. Goes right up the middle. Has some space. Tackled at the... 32 down to the 29 yard line. Mark's in on the stop. Yeah, Ohm getting it done with his legs again. And you can tell after that penalty, St. John's having some momentum here. Starting to feel a little bit of a swing. EJ Jones on the tackle. Good for a Citizens National Bank first down. Ball in the 29. 
Fresh set of sticks for the Blue Jays. 3.40 remaining in the Leland Smith third quarter. St. John's in business. And this is the handoff. Feathers has it at the 25, down to the 26-yard line. Carson Hefner in on the stop. Hefner was able to get, grab him and not let Feathers go before he brought him down. But we've seen Feathers have some pretty good runs here so far throughout the entire game. and Had another one right there on first down. Six-yard pickup. And we are coming up on second down. St. John's continuing their methodical approach on offense. Ohm lets this one go. Pass is complete to Gagne. 19, getting some nice yak. It takes it in for a Lodix Jewelry touchdown. That's a big touchdown for the Blue Jays. They needed an answer. Gagne found himself wide open on that far side. Then made a man miss. And that was an easy trot into the end zone. Gagne with the catch of the 20. It looked like that it was going to be all and then makes a nice move here on the Web Insurance Agency Instant Replay and ties this one up with the Fat Jack's Pizza Extra Point forthcoming. The way this game is going, that missed extra point in the first quarter loomed very large, and that was on the very, or perhaps there's a second uh, PAT attempt. And this kick is up. And good, the Fat Jack's Pizza Extra Point is good, and St. John's has retaken the lead. 2.41 remaining in the third quarter. It's a 28-27 lead for St. John's. We'll be back. Welcome back, Dr. Underbrink and the eyesight of Lima and Delphus, your Red Zone sponsor. Dr. Underbrink provides quality, comprehensive eye care to Lima, Delphus, and surrounding areas. Visit the eyesightoflima.com for more information. And Leland Smith Insurance, our quarter sponsor, your first call for all of your insurance needs. St. John's retakes the lead on a Connor Gagne 20 yard touchdown reception. A 28-27 lead for St. John's, and that's exactly the answer that Delphi St. John's needed. Yeah, absolutely. You know, they had been sputtering coming out of the locker room as they had, had uh, two straight um, three-and-out possessions, and they had to make something happen. Even if it wasn't necessarily a score on that one, you had to start getting some of that momentum back, starting to feel good about what you were doing, and they decided that they wanted to put the points on the board and took it all the way down with the Gagne touchdown. So now the Blue Jays will kick it off. Cowens fields it at the 10. He's had a lot of success fielding kicks so far tonight. And this one out to the 32, between the 32 and the 33 yard line. And St. John's defense has not had an answer for Matthew Quatman here in the third quarter. We'll see if LCC continues to feed him the ball or if they look somewhere else. So LCC getting ready for their next drive and saw an ESPN article that came out this afternoon ranking the uh, top 50 high school football teams of all time. And uh, a noticeable not inclusion on the list was any of the Delphi St. John's teams from the late 90s. Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't think I saw the same article. There was another one talking about, you know, if you want to be considered the best teams, who you get compared to. and. Uh, as that run only going to have a couple of yard gain by Parker, but yep. uh, you know, and they were, and there were several Ohio teams, and they were specifically talking about their win streaks and what was more impressive, and and I couldn't believe in nowhere was it mentioned the Delphi St. John's. Yeah, yeah, the number two team was uh, the 1940 Massillon team that had a practice game against Kent State and beat them. <laughs> now being a an attendee of Kent State. I'm not surprised by that. We're going to step away, take a quick take time out. I think there's a cramp issue being dealt with on the field. We'll be right back. 28-27, St. John's on top. Welcome back. T.J. Wirtz had a cramp and was getting that worked on, so he'll come off the field for at least a play. Looks to be all right. As we get back to action here, second down and eight for LCC. Ball on their own, 35. Just over two minutes remaining in this third quarter. 
And Parker looking to pass. He does pass complete, looking for that near side with plenty of space. This is Michael Quatman and the freshman Mike. making some action here as he's tackled at the 45. Yeah, Michael Quatman, we've usually just seen him on those wide, um, those wide screen passes. That time, a little bit of trickery to get him a little bit more space, and he made the most of it. Citizens National Bank first down. Picks up a nice gain for LCC, and that puts the ball at the 45. Now T-Birds in plus territory. Parker fakes the handoff, looks to throw, and lets this one go. Looking for Burke, far sideline, and the pass looks to be caught at the 12-yard line the Citizens National Bank first down as Billy Burke making himself noticed in a big way in this one right now. Yeah, Billy Burke did a great job of high-pointing that football, going up and just taking it away with his hands. Big, strong uh, young man right there. He's able to take that one, making sure he got one foot in bounds. What about the throw by Parker right there? It had to be perfect, and it was. Billy Burke made sure he cashed in on it, and now they're back down inside the red zone. Great throw, great catch by the 6'6 senior, and now that is LCC in the eyesight of Lima and Delphi's red zone. First and goal, ball at the 10. And here is Quatman getting the handoff inside, but not finding much of anywhere to run. Joel Schrader among the Blue Jays in there on the stop. Billy Burke plays basketball for LCC. And funny story, I was having a conversation with him last year, and he asked where I went to high school, and I told him, I said, I went to New Philadelphia. He looks at me and goes, is that a real place? <laughs> He's like, no, I'm, I'm at school. I don't mean to offend, but it's just like, is that a real place? Because he thought Philadelphia. I was like, is there a New Philadelphia? It's like, yeah, there is a New Philadelphia. <laughs> it's slightly smaller than the, uh, just, just the original a, Philadelphia. Just a little. Yeah, just a little bit. Here, second down and 10. Quatman on the jet, going right side, down at the four-yard line. Nice job by Quatman that time. Good field vision to make sure he put the brakes on. He planted that right foot and cut right up to make sure that he got at least some positive yardage out of that run. And it's going to bring up third down and four, though, so we'll see what LCC can draw up. St. John's needing a defensive stop here as they trail by one, as this will likely be the final play of this third quarter. And what has been, I believe, the quickest quarter of the three. Here's Parker on third down, going right side, and he'll take it right in for a Lodix Jewelry touchdown. Yeah, that was easy that time by Parker as he went in. and The line did a great job of sealing the edge, and he was able to walk in untouched. So the T-Birds cash in, and they retake the lead, 33-28. And you have to think at, at what point do you try for that two-point conversion and extend Parker's it to a seven-point so lead. it might be right now, and it is. Parker looks at the wristband. He's going to line them up. They're going to go for two. So this looks like the moment as Scott Palti's going to try and get back to even, so to speak. So going for the two-point conversion, Parker keeps it, has a guy in his face, in trouble. Able to stay with it, throws this one up in a desperation, and it is incomplete. So the St. John's defense with a nice play, and the two-point conversion is no good. 22 seconds left in the third quarter. It's a five-point LCC lead here on WOSN. Welcome back. Our instant replay is sponsored by Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. LCC with a nice touchdown drive, two-point conversion, no good. Gives them a 33-28 to 28 lead on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken scoreboard as we come up on 22 seconds remaining in the third quarter. And it's been a alternating uh, tale of how the scoring has gone. 14-13 to 13 after the end of the first quarter, 21-13 to 13 at halftime. And as you see, the teams have put up some points uh, since then. Yeah, LCC stumbled there for a little while, but they have definitely found their rhythm since. 
And they've scored on every possession they've had here in the third quarter. The defense has gotten stops uh, that last time through. Delphi St. John's, though, is able to get things going one more time, and they're just looking for another answer. T-Birds have outscored the Blue Jays 20 to 7 in the third quarter, and this will be another squibber. This one goes straight. Gagne fields it at the 18-yard line. Has a lot of space, was about 15 yards ahead of field before the nearest uh, uh, T-Bird was nearby. So probably one play coming up for the Blue Jays before we flip fields. And if they time it just right and they're down at the 50, they just. Makes it easy on the uh, chain guys as well. They, they appreciate those easy flips. Yeah. Likely the final play of the third quarter. Um, back to pass, rolling out, floats that one up, and that one's going to be incomplete. Looking for Tyler Lindemann on that play. And we'll have one more play here in the third quarter. Yeah, I think they just like messing around with you, Patrick. You know, this is the last couple times we thought it might be the last play, and they continue to find ways to extend the quarter. I don't know. Coach Schulte might be hearing this and going, oh, is that so? <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> and he would not be the first coach. <laughs> to, uh, to do that. Eight seconds. Just heard Mike Miller from Fun 107.1 say this will be the last play, so I'm sure it will be. This is Wirtz. Nice carry. Out across the 40 to the 41-yard line, and indeed that will be the last play of the third quarter. A good one here, brewing for a great finish. Fourth quarter coming up, 33-28 LCC on top. We'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Leland Smith Insurance is our quarter sponsor. Your first call for all your insurance needs. And tonight's timeouts are sponsored by Metzger Financial Services. Helping you plan your financial future, call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Fourth quarter getting started here on WOSN, LCC, and Delphi St. John's. Patrick Kamler, Matt, Nate Garlock. I almost called you Matt Metzger. <laughs> Oh, Matt, I need would, to Matt, go. Matt would have been upset with that. I got uh, Then I got two guys upset with me. <laughs> Grant Ohm is stuck in the backfield, and what a start for the LCC defense in the fourth quarter as Lewis Knotts gets in there on the stop and brings up fourth down. And Knotts did a great job of shedding his blocker right away into the backfield to get to Ohm. And that is a huge play for this Thunderbird defense. Well, Ohm no doubt knows who his name is at this point, and that's going to bring up fourth and ten, and it's a punting situation now for St. John's. The Lions have done pretty well. Sacks have been few and far between in this one tonight. And Cowens signals fair catch as he fields this one at the See where they mark him. Looks like he bound down around the 19, between the 18 and the 19 yard line. So a great stop for LCC. And now the T Birds get the football back with a five point lead and a chance to extend out to what would be their largest lead of the day. Yeah, and you got to think that LCC would just love to be able to grind this one, get it done on the ground, short passes, run a bunch of time. You know, obviously, ideally end this one in the end zone, but at the very least with this lead to kill a bunch of time here on the clock. You saw LCC attempt something similar, at least what appeared to us up here, something similar where they tried to run down a lot of clock near the end of the second quarter. Then that uh, that drive stalled out. We'll see if they have better success on this one as there is 11-12 remaining in the fourth quarter. Here is Quatman going far side out across the 25 to the 26 yard line before he is brought down. Quatman that time just being very patient, working his way through traffic, finding small holes, cutting back. Able to get himself a seven yard gain there on 
first down, so second and third as LCC gets a good start to this drive. As you said earlier, anytime you can not necessarily lean on Carson Parker to carry the football, anytime you get more guys involved, get Quatman involved, that's just going to help. That's going to help this game for LCC and then the rest of the season, cutting down on the wear and tear of Parker. Here's Quatman again, and when he's got runs like that, it's an easy call. Nice spin move, truck hitting all the buttons out to the 45-yard line in a Citizens National Bank first down. And the St. John's defense right now is just looking a little bit tired. They've taken a lot of hits. They've had to work really hard. They've been on the field a lot. And you see right now this offensive line from LCC is creating big holes. And when you have ball carriers like Matthew Quatman and Carson Parker, they don't need a lot of space. They're taking advantage of it. Parker, as we've mentioned, you know, 6'3", 210, Quatman, 5'11", 175. But in the fourth quarter, that 175 feels a little heavier. Here's Parker going to keep it on first down. Makes some nice cuts, and he's off to the races. Out to the 35, picks up a nice downfield block from Burke. And he is pushed out of bounds at the 11-yard line. Good for a Citizens National Bank first down. The St. John's crowd wanting holding on Billy Burke. Doesn't look like they're going to get it. I don't see any flags on the field. Yeah, you saw Burke. He was blocking downfield as Parker came up to him. And Burke was right there. The official was right there. So well, whatever was going on, the official felt like that was okay. It wasn't anything he needed to pull the flag on and a big gain for LCC. And that's going to put LCC in the eyesight of Lima and Delphus red zone. And St. John's needing a stop here. Ball on the 13. Here's Quatman out across the 10 to the 9. One benefit here for St. John's if LCC does end up getting this one into the end zone is they did move down the field very quickly. So there is still plenty of time on the clock for St. John's. But First things first, you'd love for the defense to get a stop here, maybe limit LCC to just three. Try to keep it the one possession if you can. I mean, still plenty of time in this game, but here's Parker with a keeper and able to keep his feet diving toward the end zone, but he's going to be stopped at the one. He has great balance for a big man. As you know, he moves through. That's a big body. You, you know, you've mentioned the you know, height and size and you know how he can move, but. When he's going down, the fact that he able he's able to keep himself up and continue to move forward, always picking up those extra yards. So the third down conversion gives him a Citizens National Bank first down. A ball spotted on the one. And just with the size that Parker has, you got to think this is just a tall order for any defensive line. It's going to be Quatman, however, and he takes it. Right in for a Lodix Jewelry touchdown, and it's an 11-point LCC lead. Matthew Quatman having a big game, third touchdown of the half. Gives LCC a two-possession lead. 8.37 left to go, still a lot of football to play, but LCC right now really opening this one up. As you said, their largest lead of the game, and as I said, they've been coming on here, and certainly not insurmountable by any stretch. A two-possession game, but... LCC right now got to be feeling pretty good about the momentum being pretty much all on their side as we await the Fat Jack's Pizza extra point. And the kick is up, and it is good. 40 to 28, LCC asserting themselves in this one. 8.37 left in the game. We'll be back. Welcome back. Tonight's first down sponsor is Citizens National Bank. See how we're building businesses one relationship at a time at cmbohio.com. And our touchdown sponsor is Lonix Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert or online at lonix.com. LCC with another touchdown drive. Extra point, making it 40 to 28 LCC as they have outscored Delphi St. John's 20 Seven to seven, here in the third, four, uh, in the second half, rather. Yeah, it's just a tremendous half so far for LCC. They've scored on every possession that they've had. Really opened this one up, and Delphi St. John's hasn't had much of an answer. And offensively, they really started to sputter too, as we saw in the first half. They could pretty much move the ball at will, but you got to credit this LCC defense for making the adjustments coming out here in the second half, implementing 
um, those adjustments. And they're holding strong here with 8.37 left to go. So St. John's facing their largest deficit. And this one will just be fielded and taken care of at the 33-yard line. And that's where St. John's will start. And, you know, something you mentioned on the last drive, we were starting to see the line for LCC starting to open up larger holes for Quatman and Parker to run through. And maybe we were starting to see that with LCC's defensive side able to get more pressure on Ulm than they have been the entire game. We'll see if, if that continues to develop here on this drive. Yeah, well, I think and one of the big differences that we haven't talked about yet is when you look at the line, Delphi St. John's does have a lot of players that go both ways. LCC has not, they don't have quite as many. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, it's it's a hot day. You know, it's still week two. Some conditioning is, is still going on. And you wonder if maybe that's what we're seeing. And you say that it's not as many, but it's still, you know, a couple of kids going 15, 20 extra plays than their counterparts as all I'm looking for space here on first down and dives ahead and gets maybe one or two on that play. Well, and at the end of the day, you only need one to win, right? They only need right. one to win that battle and to get through. So if, you, if you've got a couple of guys mm -hmm. on those lines who are a little bit fresher going up against somebody who's a little bit more tired, that could be a big advantage. Without a doubt. So three yards on the carry for Ulm. Second down and seven. Ulm looking to pass. Looking for the corner and got him. Gagne with the catch at the 43-yard line. Good for a pickup of around six. We'll make it third down and about one. Great effort by Gagne, but it looks like he might be shaken up on the sidelines. And as he is, as the trainer comes over to check on him, the officials are going to call a timeout. So we will step away as well. 7.36 remaining in the fourth quarter. It's a 40-28 LCC lead. We'll be right back. Back to action here at Champions Field. 40-28 on the least famous recipe scoreboard. LCC on top. St. John's with the football. And 7.25 and counting. Left in this one, third down and one is Wirtz with the carry out across the 45 to the 47. That is good for a Citizens National Bank first down. Great second effort by Wirtz that time. Jaden Williams had busted through and it looked like he might be able to stop Wirtz before he even got to the line of scrimmage. But Wirtz kept his feet going, a little bit of extra spin move there, picked up the yards that they needed for the first down. Fresh set of sticks. Ohm looking. And it's just going to throw this one away, as was not able to find anyone out there. LCC with good coverage, second down. Kind of threw it in between two receivers. Is that one out of bounds? The official immediately pointing to there was a receiver in the area, so no intentional grounding. Second down and 10. The ball on the 47-yard line. Home with a handoff to Wirtz. Wirtz with a full head of steam out across the middle for a Citizens National Bank first down as he is dropped at the 42-yard line. Big first down for Delphi St. John's. We're starting to see them get that rhythm back. As this is a huge drive. They have to put something in the end zone to give themselves a chance as that clock continues to run. Quatman and Quatman in on the stop. Ball spot of the 42, first down. Quickly, the play comes in. Ulm. Happy feet back there looking for someone and has a man wide open. That's Metzger at the 26-yard line. Good for another Citizens National Bank first down. Yeah, it looks like EJ Jones just floated a little bit too far to his left. and As he did that, he left Metzger all alone along that sideline. A great find by Alm as the Blue Jays are on the move. A little bit of a tempo play there. St. John's has used the vast majority of the play clock to get plays in. And that one was on the quick side. Here is Wirtz. Plenty of space up the middle at the 15 to the 10. Breaks a tackle and down at the four yard line. Good for another Citizens National Bank first down as St. John's is back in the eyesight of Lima and Delphi's red zone. And I'll tell you what, not a lot of people might not have seen that, but Wirtz with a great job slipping a tackle and then his quarterback running around going out to get in front and he, he set a beautiful block. And here is Wirtz again on first and goal, pushing the pile ahead and is going to be stopped at the one. 
So Words has been relatively quiet here almost the entire game, only called his name a handful of times, but on this drive, he's coming up big for the Blue Jays. Second and goal at the one. And this is Wirtz again, and sticks the ball into the end zone for a touchdown. A Lodix Jewelry touchdown, and St. John's needed a quick answer, and that's exactly what they got. And once again, it was the second effort as Wirtz was hit before he got to that goal line, but continued to push, extended that ball, and a much needed touchdown for Delphi St. John's. And they're gonna go just for the extra point, going for two, doesn't get them any closer. They're gonna need a touchdown either way. And the big question is going to be whether or not that Blue Jay defense can come out and get a stop on this Thunderbird offense that has been red hot in the second half. Fat Jack's extra point is up, and it is good. Coming up on a thrilling finish here from Champions Field, it's a 40-35 lead for LCC. T-Birds will have the football when we come back on WOSN. Welcome back. Today's presenting sponsor is Union Bank. Union Bank committed to you. Our Red Zone sponsor is Dr. Underbrink at the Eye Site of Lima and Delphus, providing quality, comprehensive eye care to Lima, Delphus, and surrounding areas. Visit the site of Lima.com for more information. And tonight's extra point sponsor is Fat Jack's Pizza. Get to Fat Jack's Pizza before or after the game and enjoy their delicious pizza, fun games, and ice cold drinks. Well, there have been plenty of everything I just read <laughs> in this one. 40 to 35. LCC with a five point lead on Delphi St. John's. But St. John's with a relatively quick drive to close the gap to within five. And now can LCC answer on offense? And uh, maybe an attempt at an onside kick. That's going to roll out of bounds. And it was a good attempt as nobody from LCC was on that edge. If they could have had a little less roll, it could have been close. But LCC is going to get good field position here as it really doesn't matter because St. John's has to have a stop here. Well, I suppose it is possible, but I don't think we'll have overtime. Just throwing that out there. With my pension for being wrong, everyone in the crew is looking at me. <laughs> Even Kelsey, who's down on the field, who can't see me, is looking at me right now. Like, don't you, don't you put that evil on us? It's a five-point lead for LCC. We'll see what they do with the ball here. First and ten, ball in the 47. Here's Quatman with the carry. Finds a nice hole. He's been finding those. That space has been there. And still pushing the pile forward. Is going to get a Citizens National Bank first down and then some. Looks like he's going to be stopped for about a six-yard gain. Turns it into 12. Yeah, what an excellent extra push that time as Quatman refused to go down. His teammates came over for a little support, and they get another first down. And more importantly, that clock is going to continue to run with a fresh set of downs for the T-Birds. And if you're LCC, you don't need to score points immediately. You just need to keep the clock running as we have an official's timeout. And a uh, St. John's player is down on one knee. I guess they can't really see who it is at first. Uh, he's going to need a little medical attention. So we will step away and take a timeout as well. 521 remaining. Five-point lead for LCC. We'll be back. Welcome back. Our quarter sponsor, Leland Smith Insurance. Your first call for all your insurance needs back here in the fourth quarter. LCC with the football and a five-point lead at their 41-yard line. The 41-yard line of St. John's, that is, and a fresh set of downs. LCC in no hurry. I'll let that play clock wind all the way down before they snap this one. As we mentioned, Thunderbirds in no hurry with the lead. They're in kill clock mode. They're going to take this one all the way down to one. And Parker with the carry here on first down. He's across the 40 to the 39-yard line. And expect to see this kind of offense from LCC probably the rest of the way. And you wonder at what point 
And we'll see St. John's start burning some timeouts. They have all three of them still. But this time, LCC doesn't have to snap this ball until it's under four minutes to play. Maybe they can get a stop here. Go ahead and burn one of them. And St. John's demonstrated that they can score quickly. They did on that last touchdown drive. So something to build confidence for the team. Now here's Quatman working that left side on second down. Picks up about four. And that'll make it third down and say probably around six to go for LCC. St. John's wanting to preserve those timeouts for when they get the ball back. I'd imagine we maybe see them burn one here if they can get this stop on fourth down as they await that punt. I would imagine that's certainly a possibility. Ball on the 37. St. John's crowd gets into a third and six. Man in motion for the T-Birds. Now they're set. Looks like they're trying to draw St. John's off sides. Parker and their LCC is going to take their first timeout. That's a Metzger Financial Services timeout. So they'll talk this one over. This has been a high-scoring affair, 42-35. Uh, no one's at the 50 just yet. Welcome into this contest, LCC and Delphi St. John's. Again, if you're just joining us, a five-point lead for LCC and what has been a high-scoring affair for both teams. It's, it's alternated the, the flow of the game, Nate Garlock. There have been times where it seems like the defenses couldn't get a stop, and then there have been times where the defenses have really stiffened up, and it's the offenses that have been trouble putting points on the board. Yeah, and I mean, I think you just have to give uh, credit to these coaching staffs and the adjustments that they have made in game. When things haven't been working, they've been able to figure it out, make the adjustments, and then on the other side, the offenses say, okay, that doesn't work anymore. We'll make an adjustment, take advantage of it, and it has just been a back and forth all, um, all game long. And that's why we sit here with just a five-point difference. LCC had a quite the surge in the second half. They at one point they had outscored St. John's 27 to 7 in the second half. St. John's putting seven more points on the board to cut that, but really LCC with the advantage and 317 remaining in the fourth quarter. A big, a pivotal third down play coming up here for both sides. If LCC can get the first down, they can chew a lot more clock off, potentially. We'll see what they do here. They're going to throw it on third down. Burke cannot come up with it. Incomplete at the 30-yard line and a big stop And what I would imagine a punting situation is... Thumb. It is going to be a punt, it looks like, as yeah. Parker walks back. More importantly, an incomplete pass stops the clock, so they do not have to burn a timeout. A great timing route that time where it looked like they were going to have it. Burke turned around, the ball was right there, but just not able to hang on. A fortunate break for Delphi St. John's, but they're going to get the ball back and have an opportunity to drive this one down to take the lead. Opportunity here for St. John's, or for LCC to pin him back deep, and here's more movement on the punt. And they will punt this one off, so Parker looking to pin them as deep as they can, and they're going to get a nice roll to the one-foot line. That's about as good as you can possibly do it. And St. John's is going to have 99 and two feet of field to go through for this drive. Because why not? Right. <laughs> why, why wouldn't Carson Parker be able to kick that one and not get dead at the one-foot line? When you, when you are trying to find somebody who can just do it all for his team. I mean, and what an incredible punt. And now St. John's has a long way to go, but they have time and all three timeouts. Three minutes and two seconds, all three timeouts. Uh, time not exactly a factor yet for St. John's. There's still plenty of time on the clock, but they got to get out of the shadow of their own goalpost to start off. Here's Ulm on first down, flinging this one up and just out of the outstretched hands of the receiver, and I think that was Metzger who and comes up a little, limping a little bit on that play. And it was a good ball. Alm floated that one into space. Somewhere where his receiver was going to have an opportunity to go and get that. Didn't want to underthrow that one and have it picked off. Just off the fingertips of his intended target. That was Braden Pullman, actually, number 18 on the intended reception. 5'10", 170-pound junior. First time we've called his name tonight. Brings up second down and 10. 
And a handoff to Wirtz, just trying to give Ulm a little space to operate as he pushes the pile ahead to around the five-yard line. So, so not, go ahead. Not, not a flashy play, but effective, moves the ball up, does give them a little bit of breathing room back there where Alm doesn't have to line up in his own end zone, but the clock is running here. 2.33 remaining, Ohm dropping back to pass, third down, pass is complete, out to the 15 to the 20 yard line, good for a Citizens National Bank, first down, Drew Boggs with the completion. I'll tell you what, Boggs ran a great route that time. He went just uh, far enough on that route to get behind EJ, EJ Jones, but sat down soon enough to where Josh Young wasn't gonna be able to run up and pick that one off. 2.16. And handoff to Wirtz, and Wirtz, ball comes out, ball is loose, LCC on top of it, but does St. John's come up with it? They did, St. John's able to save the possession and the football game. Very fortunate for Adolphus St. John's that time as Wirtz was trying to move through that pile, and LCC, they were being some ball hawks, rip that one away, but Looks like Wirtz still can ha uh, battling some cramping. So we'll step away and take a timeout. 159 remaining in this one. LCC on top, 40 to 35. We'll be back. Welcome back. 159 remaining in the Leland Smith fourth quarter. Five point lead for LCC. St. John's on the march. 79 yards from pay dirt. Oh, and back to pass. Second down and eight. Looking far side. Pass complete. Incomplete. Feathers. Gets a lick hit on him there at the 21-yard line, and a flag comes out on the opposite side of the field. I don't know if they're going to call him that defenseless receiver as he didn't have a chance to really establish himself and protect himself. Be interesting to see what the call is. And that's and what I think it's going to be. I, you can tell by Parker's reaction. It is not going to be in the favor of the Thunderbirds. Indeed, that is the call. So... LCC fans will react to that, as you might imagine. But that's going to be a big, big penalty favoring Delphi St. John. Says that is a Citizens National Bank first down on the penalty. And that's going to move the ball all the way out to the 38-yard line. 147 remaining in this one. Fresh set of downs for St. John's. Blue Jays in business. Screen pass out to Feathers on first down, out to the 42-yard line. And nice wrap up by LCC to keep him in bounds. St. John's holding on to those timeouts. A minute 30 left to go. And they're going to hustle up to the line. They'll be a little quicker on this one. Riley Mueller in the backfield with Grant Ohm. 120 remaining. All their timeouts remaining. And this one incomplete. Pass defense by E.J. Jones for LCC and the St. John's faithful winning a penalty and not going to get it. That was close as E.J. Jones was coming over, looking for the push that time. As this is going to bring up another big third down for the Blue Jays. Third and six. Ball on the 42, 116 remaining. Ohm standing in the pocket, lets this one go. Pass complete to the 50-yard line. Gets out of bounds. Pass caught once again by Boggs. Good for a Citizens National Bank first down. That's two key catches for Boggs on this drive. And a great heads-up play by Boggs that time. As soon as he caught that one to make sure he curled back around, got outside to make sure that he got the clock stopped. Nose of the football on the 50. This drive started on the one. Here is Ohm on first down. Boggs again to the 44-yard line. Right now they're just taking advantage of the space that Young is giving Boggs. As you see, Young now going to go ahead and take a couple of steps up. Wouldn't be surprised if we don't see a double move here. And someone on the Delphi St. John's sideline telling the crowd, quiet down a little bit, make sure our guys can hear. Second down and two. Ohm back to pass, looking across the middle. Boggs once again has been his man on this drive to the 31-yard line. Good for Citizens National Bank, first down. The clock stops while the sticks move. And a timeout called Citizens National, I'm sorry, Metzger Financial Services timeout. 
And we will keep it here with 45 seconds remaining as Delphi St. John's takes their first time out. And quite the impressive drive so far. Started on their own one yard line. They're on the LCC 31 yard line. And they've only had to use one timeout so far. Yeah, they've been fortunate. You know, the, uh, um, I don't think they called it target. Uh, the defenseless receiver, the unsportsmanlike penalty, the, the, that really helped on that third yeah. down. Got the clock stopped. They've had a couple of intercept or uh, incompletions that have helped and then been able to convert. When they do, they're getting out of bounds. Boggs is having a huge drive. He's catching everything that comes toward him. You just see him uh, catch another one right there in the middle of the field. So two timeouts left, 45 seconds left to go. St. John's still plenty of time as they can, they're driving looking to get this one done. Plenty of opportunities for Web Insurance Agency instant replays on this drive, and I have a feeling we might have a couple more before this one wraps up. Ball on the 31, fresh set of downs for St. John's. Here is Wirtz receiving the handoff, and LCC stopping him for a one-yard gain. And timeout called. I think timeout was called. No, no it wasn't. No the, timeout. The, the official saw the signal coming in, and it looked like a triangle. I, I think see, he thought uh, it was a timeout. Right. I've seen that a couple of times. I thought that was a timeout also. It was just a signal. This is Ohm. Back to pass. Second and 10. Pressure coming. Able to escape it. In trouble. Ohm lets this one go. Pass is complete. Man open and out of bounds for a Citizens National Bank first down, as that is Tyler Linderman. And Coming up with the big catch, and now they are in the eyesight alignment at Delphus Red Zone. And I think that St. John's might have caught a break that time in the backfield as Alm was running around. Uh, there was an LCC defender back there, and one of his linemen gave, it wasn't a hard shove, but he did give a push in the back. The official right there didn't call it, led to a big completion. And first and 10 from just outside the 10-yard line, 17 seconds left to go. And I'll tell you what, at a time there, this looks like this might turn into a blowout. And it has gotten exciting as this one is getting close to the end. LCC had raced out. We, we said they had a 27 to 7 advantage here in the second half at one point. Welcome if you're just joining us here from Champions Field to Stadium Park. And this has been an exciting fourth quarter. 40 to 28 was the lead at one point for LCC. St. John's with a touchdown. And then LCC with a great job pinning the Blue Jays all the way back at their own one yard line to start that drive. That drive still in action now at the LCC 11 yard line and 17 seconds remaining in this one. That was LCC's timeout that was taken. So St. John still has two left with 17 seconds. St. John's needs a touchdown, down five. They have two timeouts remaining. And the playbook is open with the two timeouts, and they're going to use Wirtz. Wirtz up the middle, breaking tackles, and in for a touchdown. Wirtz has been battling cramps this entire second half. We've seen him have to come out of the game multiple times. They had to come out and stretch him out. But when it mattered most, they kept it in his hands, and he punched it into the end zone. A Laudix Jewelry touchdown, and T.J. Wirtz with a 24-carat score on that play. Giving St. John's a 41 to 40 lead, and it looks like they're going to attempt the Fat Jack's Pizza extra point. A 99 yard drive, and the Fat Jack's extra point caps it off. A 42 to 40 lead for Delphi St. John's, and you know, you don't want to pick one particular thing, but you look at that two-point lead right now and you think, missed two-point conversion, missed extra point. Otherwise, this one's tied. Yeah, those, those loom very large right now. Still 13 seconds left to go. LCC does have a timeout. I imagine we're not going to see any sort of long kick from St. John's, probably a squib kick. They uh, don't want to give Cowan or Burke an opportunity for a long run uh, back like they have, but... I mean, what an impressive drive from Alm and St. John's, 99 yards. They are able to punch it in, 13 seconds left to go. And I'll tell you what, this is why Coach Schulte is such a, an amazing coach and a game manager. A lot of coaches and a lot of people would have used up these timeouts way sooner. He held on to them, he trusted his team, he had a plan, and it worked to perfection as he left only 13 seconds left up on that clock. That penalty 
uh, first down that uh, LCC gave essentially to St. John's really kind of helped kickstart this drive. That was a third down conversion, and St. John's really has put the drive together. He said just timely passing, uh, just expertly running the clock as St. John's has done on this drive, and now they hold a two-point lead, and now it's LCC's turn. They've got 13 seconds and one timeout. Let's see what the T-Birds can do here. And it's going to be a squib kick. Takes a bounce and fielded there at the 30-yard line. Not going much of anywhere. Down at the 32-yard line is Isaac Leppert fielding that one. And that will bring up seven seconds. And you got to think, you probably got time for one play. It's going to have to be something from the back of the playbook. Now, the good thing is, is you have a quarterback who has one heck of an arm. You do have a six foot four wide receiver out there that you can throw down. You're, you're obviously going to be looking for a jump ball or some sort of play. I mean, they have options here, but man, they are very slim. Seven seconds left, one timeout, but that is almost a moot point. You can use the timeout maybe for, if you throw a seven yard slant or something like that, but and St. John's is going to use their second timeout as they want to talk this one over. Having seen the formation that LCC puts up, and they want to talk this one over. And a, what a thrilling way to cap off week two of the high school football season. You know, we, we talked about maybe just the long pass and the jump ball, but don't forget that this team has Matthew Qualtman. He is a tough man to tackle. They can get him across the middle with the speed and toughness. He gives them an opportunity as well. So they have a couple of choices here on what they may want to do. Not sure if we'll see any sort of trickery here. Don't think we'll see any throwback passes or anything like that. But don't count LCC out quite yet. Man, you wonder if you see, uh, and again, I know nothing. That's why I'm up here and I'm not coaching. But you got to think, man, a, a pass using Billy Burke's length, little hook and ladder play to someone who's fast, Quatman down the outside. I don't know, we'll see. Ball in the 32. Downs don't matter, seven seconds left. Low snap, here's Parker. Here's Burke with the pass, is gonna get down at the 45 yard line with three seconds left as they will use that last timeout, no doubt, as the clock will stop until the sticks are planted. See, you need to give yourself a little bit more credit there, Patrick. You said, you know, seven-yard slant, quick timeout. That's exactly what they did. They just wanted to get something that got them a little bit closer to midfield. And we'll see what they draw up now, but a little bit, I, you know, from watching Carson Parker warm up and some of the passes, he can get this to the end zone if that's what they want to do. It's also the matter, though, it's going to take your receiver some time to get down there. Can that line hold him? St. John's going to come after him. What are they going to do? Citizens National Bank first down. And they put an additional second on the clock, I believe. So it'll be four seconds. Not mattering much of anything at this point. As this will be the last play of the game. Hey, I said no overtime. <laughs> that was right. <laughs> I got a feeling that one's going to come back to get you at some point this fall. It will, this yeah. Fall. Put that in the bank for later. <laughs> Here we go. Last play of the game. Parker, back to pass. Has protection. Has time. Lays it out to the 10-yard line. Pass intercepted. St. John's comes from behind. 12 down and wins the Holy War at home. Yeah, Parker had some space, but right when he got ready to unload that one, he got hit, couldn't quite get everything on it. That one's why it fluttered short. And I'll tell you what, a tremendous comeback by this St. John's Blue Jays team. A 42-40 final here from Stadium Park on Champions Field. I want to thank our sponsors for helping us out in this one, for sponsoring the broadcast. I want to thank Jacob O'Neill, Kelsey Beimer for being a part of our crew. Nick Fraley helping us out back at the station. Nate Garlock, thank you so much. What a contest, a 42-240 final here. Delphi St. John's with the win over LCC. For Patrick Cam for our Tardivio staff, I'm Patrick Hamler saying so long everyone from Delphi.
Well, down on the field, wrapping this one up, and I'm with TJ Wirtz. And, you know, TJ, you guys are down 12. Was looking like LCC was going to kind of go away with this one. You were dealing with some cramping issues. Take me through, especially that last drive, 99 yards to the, to the house on a few plays. Yeah, take me through that. What was your mindset? What were you guys thinking as you were going through that drive? I mean, our coaches got us ready. They were talking to us every time we got a break. They hyped us up. They were always ready. Uh, I just needed hydration. I, I was having problems. But I got back in there, and I knew I had to do it for my team. What were some of the adjustments that you guys made? It seemed like that you were having some problems dealing with their defensive line, and then all of a sudden it's like the switch flipped, and you guys were making yards a bunch at a time. Yeah, right at halftime, Coach Shorty got us ready, and uh, we got ready. We were good. Ready to go. It's an excited bunch of guys are over here, you know, I guess cheering you on, I guess, and also trying to distract you a little bit. It is a fun one. How does it feel to beat LCC at home? Oh, it's great. It's been a while since we've done it. It's, it's just best feeling in the world. Congratulations. Go enjoy it.